Alrighty guys, so in this video we're gonna go over something pretty simple and we're gonna be going over how to increase your level cap. So if we look at any character on the field, of course, you're gonna have a level cap first off at 20, and then it's gonna cap at 40, then 50, then 60, and then 70. And anytime you wanna increase your level cap, you're going to need to ascend your characters. Now to ascend your characters, you're gonna need two different resources that are gonna be coming out. The first of which is gonna be these two sets here, which should be the Shiva Jade Fragment, as well as the Horror Frost Core. I'll be going over how to go with those in this video. And the second two are going to be normal materials that you're going to get throughout the field. These are going to be either from uh, you going around and actually picking up the materials, which is going to be just some kind of farming material that you can get daily. Uh, they are going to spawn randomly around the map if you need a list of where to get those. You can always use the interactive map. The interactive map for this guy, we need to find calla lilies. So you can see here, if we go back to him, he needs to find calla lilies. And if you want to find calla lilies, you can see exactly where they are located on the map to find them anytime you want to, so you know exactly where to go. The next resource he's going to need, of course, is going to be Treasure Hoarder Insignias, and these are dropped directly from the Treasure Hoarders in the game, and whenever they die, they, of course, will drop them, and you can get more and more and more of them. The other two resources we're going to get, these are going to come directly from Cryo Regis Finds, as well as uh, more Cryo Regis Finds. But the character I'm working in right now to ascend is going to be Mona, and Mona's going to need to get Philanemo Mushrooms. If you haven't know where to get these, they are going to drop in a very annoying place, which is going to be on the under the eaves of houses, which is not really a descriptive thing, and when you, if you want to know exactly where to get them, of course, interactive map is your friend, and you can actually pull it up. The interactive map is just going to tell you, though, in one spot. They're all going to be here, here, and here. These are the three areas that you can get Philanemo Mushrooms. There is nowhere else on the map to get them. You have to get them in Mondstadt, as you can see, or under the ease of houses in Mondstadt, in the houses in Springvale, and finally over here at the Dawn Winery, and the houses next to the Dawn Winery. Now, I actually went home around and farmed a bunch of these already, so I'm good to go there. And then these ones, I actually have to do Whopper Flowers, and I'll have to ascend these later, so I'll show you how to get those. Okay. Now, the other thing that you're going to need to know is you are going to need to learn how to craft at this point. Now, because crafting is going to matter because you are going to need to take the small fragments that you do have and craft them into a larger fragment. By doing that, you can, can upgrade those same fragments into even larger fragments, which will allow you to upgrade your characters depending on the character ascension level that you are currently at. Now, now the other materials that, of course, that you did see me need, I ended up needing this thing called Shimmering Nectar. I needed a total of four more of them because I had a total of 14. Now, now, there's also certain characters that you can use while crafting in course in order to get more of the product so i'm gonna go ahead and use sucrose here in order to get possibly additional drops here so if i get lucky and i did not if you do get additional drops it'll just say it right here so now if i go back into my character screen and i go over to mona and hit ascend you'll notice that i have all the materials i need except for two more runs of this so before I'm done, I'm going to need to do two more runs of that same thing that you just saw me do, which will cost me um, 40 uh, resin each. And uh, you get it, since you get 120 per day, I got to wait a little bit, so I'm probably going to have to do this later tonight or possibly tomorrow, uh, depending on how lucky I get to there. What I'm going to be getting now, though, is I'm going to be getting Cleansing Hearts as well as Varunda Lazarite Chunks. Or, you know, if it, at the earlier levels, you're going to need uh, the earlier materials, which will look more like... Oops, sorry about that. Let's go to this one. It will look more like this. Uh, this is one thing that you can actually get here if at the early levels. And the other thing that will drop here at higher levels, which will, will be the blue shards right here. So they'll look more of a three-star variety. All right, so let's go ahead and do the fights. All right, now around your map, there's going to be a bunch of different things that you see here. The little, little, this thing here that says the uh, Electro Hypostasis, the Cryo Regisvine, over here, we have the, the Animo Hypnostasis. Down over here, we have the one I'm going to be doing now, which is going to be the Oceanid. Uh, over here, we're going to have the Pyro Regisfine. And finally, over here in the Geo side, we have the Geo Hypostasis. Now, all of these are what you should be farming as a newer player with your, um, excuse me, your original resin. This is what you should be primarily be spending your original resin on when you go around the map uh, prior to AR level 20. You shouldn't be trying to spend them on anything else prior to AR level 20 uh, except for these things because you're going to need them to ascend your characters. Now after AR level 20 you're also going to need to continuously farm them as well and I'm now AR level 35 and I'm still having to farm these but prior to AR level 35 this is probably the, that's the only thing you really should be going for. So let's go ahead and do the fight here. Uh, each fight is completely different. They all have different aspects of them. Uh, we're going to do the water one, and the water one is probably the most interesting to watch. This one's going to be a little tough for me right now because I got about 300 ping. So hopefully I'm not going to lag out on the dodges here.
One down. Alright, the thing we gotta know with the frog, the frog is gonna have like two different abilities. One's a jump at you, and the other one is just straight up raw damage. So right here, what you want to do is make sure you have a shield ready for when he does use his attack, because it's going to block the damage from, from the AoE right there. Now after every two, the boss is going to then just drop more tilt, put more down, and then you're just going to just give it to Pete. So I'll see you after I'm done. What I have found on this fight is the most difficult characters to kill are going to be the squirrels. Uh, the squirrels are going to just constantly rush you, so just constantly rush them back. Don't try to dodge them, don't try to run away, just go all in on them. Uh, Geo characters make this very, very, very easy because then if you have a Geo character, you can cause a crystallized effect which then allows you to get the shield. It is very, very important to you get those shields up because they help you immensely throughout the fight. All right, so that's it for the water one. Pretty uh, pretty tough fight in comparison to the other ones, but uh, overall not too bad. Um, when you're at the end of this, of course, you're gonna you know, touch the water blossom over here, take the re use your resin to get everything, and then you just get all the drops. And the drops are gonna increase as your world level increases, so you get more and more good stuff as the world level increases. And you can see there, uh, of the essential materials I need for my Mona, I ended up getting uh, none of these, but I got some of these, and I ended up getting the un unevolved versions of these, so I can actually ascend them into this later. All right, for the wind fight, uh, one of the things that's very important for this one is by keeping at range. Uh, the reason it's keep important to keep at range is because, as you see in the initial volley, what happens is the boss will do a suck-in mechanic, and the suck-in mechanic really puts a hamper on your day and does mass damage. Uh, also, making sure that you dodge the abilities just in between is very, very good. Uh, using melee characters is a little bit harder, but it is doable. I recommend just using range characters here to make... For the cryo fight, what I recommend doing is just doing a full damage rush again, uh, just doing any kind of damage with elemental synergy in order to get the flower to fall over. And once the flower falls over, you then have a full DPS rush possibility. So using characters that can rush damage, support characters that can do damage is really good. Uh, but when you do need to, make sure to drop some shields just so you don't die. Next up with the Electro Hyperstasis, this one is a little bit trickier. Uh, you are going to need two characters or three, uh, two to three characters that are going to be able to do spell casting at some point. Uh, the reason you need some kind of spell casting or some kind of magic abilities that you're going to need to deal is because when the boss finally gets to the um, uh, zero HP marker, he's going to spawn three separate things at the end. Uh, and those three types of things you have to kill, and the only way to kill those is with magic damage. You cannot use any kind of physical damage. For the the pyro one, basically this is just a full damage rush. All you have to do is make sure the the water the thing dude falls over. Uh, and when he, if he comes back up again, just do some dodging until you can actually damage the bottom piece again or get the top piece down. It's really easy to get through this one quickly. All right, the last one is the Geo version, and this one is a little bit trickier. You want to bring a character that is either a two-hand weapon, or you want to bring a Geo character like Ning Wong, or, you know, the two-hand weapon character that you would bring here is uh, Noelle. So if you want to bring Noelle, she makes this a lot easier. Uh, the thing that, about this fight is you want to make sure that you bring down the pillars when the crystal, uh, or the whatever it's called, uh, is right above it. Uh, that way it will drop down, and then you can start using your other DPS characters to do lots of damage. My recommendation for this fight is using just one character that uses either a claymore or a um a big axe or whatever in, in or geo to uh break down break those things down and the other three characters should be you know characters that are dps characters so that you can get a lot easier you can go mix and match if you want but it's a little bit easier for you at that point. uh but uh, the only other thing you're to worry about is make sure to stay within the pillars when the uh boss goes up in the air otherwise you can get clapped instantly All right, guys, so that's going to do it for all the fights that you need to see for uh, basically the entire, all, all the extra uh, things. <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys did enjoy the video, of course, like and subscribe, all the fun stuff. And yes, have a great rest of your day. Peace.